Good afternoon. We'll have partly cloudy skies in eastern Kelloland. Cloudy skies to our west. 90 today in Sioux Falls. 84 in Aberdeen. 80 in Pier and a breezy. 65 in Rapid City. Everyone in a chance of rain and thunderstorms even as we go into tonight with a low of 62 Sioux Falls. 63 in Aberdeen. 58 in Pier and 48 in Rapid City. I'll have a full look at your upcoming weekend in just a little bit as we begin midday in Kelloland. Live from Kelloland Media Group, Midday in Kelloland. She was a woman on a mission to make wishes come true. Coming up, we look back at Roxy Johnson's lasting legacy. And government officials are working to limit the impact of a global cyber attack affecting U.S. federal agencies and allies. Good afternoon and thanks for having us in. We are following developing news out of Minnesota, where just minutes ago, the results of a two-year investigation into the Minneapolis Police Department has been released. The Justice Department found that while many officers were professional and respectful, others used excessive force, including unjustified deadly force, and violated the rights of people engaged in constitutionally protected speech. The investigation also found that both police and the city discriminated against people with behavioral health disabilities when officers are called for help. The investigation began after the death of George Floyd. You can take a closer look at the findings on Kelloland.com. Turning now to our first look at your midday forecast with meteorologist Megan Chatta. Megan, possibility of some rain for parts of Kelloland heading into the weekend, right? Yes, Perry, there is rain right now in central and western South Dakota. That will slowly move to the east as we go into this afternoon and overnight. Right now, 58 degrees in Rapid City. Some clouds and a little bit of wildfire smoke still right now. North winds are at 18 miles an hour. Here is a look at our current temperatures. We have 76 in Sioux Falls, 76 in Aberdeen, 67 in Pier, and a cool 52 in Custer this afternoon. Our winds are light in eastern Kelloland, but they're a little bit stronger as we head to the west. Right now at 10 to 20 miles an hour, we could see a few higher gusts in western South Dakota. Here's a look at Kelloland Live Doppler radar where we do have those rain showers in central and western South Dakota. Nothing severe. There's no lightning on our radar right now. Just a little bit of rain. So for today, 90 in Sioux Falls, 84 in Aberdeen, 80 in Pier, and a breezy 65 in Rapid City with that chance of rain and thunder showers as we head into this afternoon. This afternoon and this evening, this area in green does have a marginal risk. They could see severe weather. The main threats are going to be hail and strong winds. These thunderstorms will come this afternoon and into the overnight hours with a low of 62 for Sioux Falls and Aberdeen, 58 in Pier and 48 in Rapid City. And then on Saturday, few more clouds possible in eastern Kelloland. But still warm, 80 in Sioux Falls and Aberdeen, 80 in Pier and 74 in Rapid City. Eastern Kelloland does have a better chance of rain and thunderstorms coming tomorrow afternoon and into the evening. But then on Sunday for Father's Day, partly cloudy skies, 84 Sioux Falls, 85 with a few rain showers possible in Aberdeen, 90 in Pier and 83 in Rapid City. I'll take a closer look at the timing for the rain and thunderstorms in just a little bit. All right, thank you very much, Megan. Well, Sioux Falls police have arrested two people after they allegedly stole a dinosaur statue. A Washington Pavilion security guard reported the theft just after midnight yesterday. Now, the security officer says he saw two males and a female carrying the Velociraptor statue toward the west side of the Washington Pavilion. In the morning, officers tracked the suspects to an apartment building near 11th and Minnesota using security footage. Reports say officers found the statue after knocking on the door and spotting it inside a home. 18-year-old Anthony Barrera and 19-year-old Morningstar Stewart were arrested for grand theft. A local fundraiser to benefit children with critical illnesses has officially come to an end. The 12th and final Angels with a Dream took place last Sunday at Great Bear Ski Valley in Sioux Falls. The event has helped grant 17 wishes through Make-A-Wish South Dakota and Montana since 2012 and was founded by Roxy Johnson, who died last November. We knew we couldn't let her down for Angels this year. She had already set the date, and so we wanted to run with it. It was so important to her because once we granted that first wish, 
we both felt the same. We had to do it again. In tonight's Eye on Kelloland, we'll tell you how those closest to Roxy stepped up to make angels fly one last time and how her legacy lives on. The small town of Perryton, Texas, is reeling after a tornado ran through their community yesterday evening with officials calling this a mass casualty event. According to the local authorities, there are three people confirmed dead, at least 56 injured, and at least two missing. Additionally, Perryton is also without power today. Many mobile homes, houses, and businesses received severe damage. Pope Francis arrived at the Vatican this morning after having been discharged from a hospital in Rome nine days after he underwent surgery to repair an abdominal hernia. The 86-year-old pontiff left the hospital in a wheelchair, waving to reporters and well-wishers at the main entrance as he was taken into a waiting car. A bid by Iowa Republican Governor Kim Reynolds to reinstate the state's strict ban on most abortions has failed in the state Supreme Court. In a rare 3-3 three three split decision on Friday, the court upheld a 2019 district court ruling that blocked the law. The outcome distinguishes Iowa from more than a dozen states across the country that severely limit access to abortion, at least for now. The ruling, however, does not preclude Reynolds and lawmakers from passing a new law restricting abortion. Currently, abortions are allowed in Iowa up to 20 weeks of pregnancy. A U.S. government agency has been caught in the latest ransomware attack coming from overseas. Natalie Brandt has more details from Washington, D.C. At least one major U.S. government agency and several private institutions have fallen victim to cyber criminals who are demanding ransom for stolen data. This criminal group has started to put the data that they extorted out on the dark web because they're trying to get companies to pay for it. Targets include the Energy Department as well as Johns Hopkins affiliated hospitals in Maryland and Florida, Georgia's statewide university system, and the Minnesota Department of Education. Shell and British Airways were also hit in the global attack. The hackers infiltrated a popular file sharing app called Move It to gain access to the sites. Bob Gurley is the former chief technology officer for the Defense Intelligence Agency. This Move It file transfer app is widely used because it makes securing data so convenient. It makes it easy to move data in a way that's encrypted. Officials say a Russia-based cyber criminal gang called CLOP is behind the attack. They never attack Russian targets. And the software they use, it seems to be configured to where it will not attack a, a system that uses a Cyrillic keyboard. Isn't that an interesting coincidence? U.S. officials say there's no evidence the hackers coordinated their attack with the Russian government. Natalie Brandt, CBS News, Washington. So far, officials say U.S. military and intelligence agencies do not appear to be impacted by the breach.